man, I, I tell you, I, uh, my first, like, my first actual kind of long range rifle that I tried to compete with was my LMT MWS 308. It was a 20 inch barrel that I was running back then. That was before they launched their 6.5 barrel. So I had, I don't know how many, probably a couple thousand rounds of 308 in competition and training and everything. Then uh, LMT released the 6.5 Creedmoor barrel. I'm guessing this may be like 2013, 2014 timeframe. That was like unbelievable. I, oh, I'm sure. I, I remember my first round through a 6.5 <laughs> Creedmoor. You're like, what is this? Oh, it was, it was awesome. I remember like changing barrel out, throw these rounds in, like no recoil. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I don't remember, maybe nine mils to a thousand yards instead of 12. Right. I'm like, this is unbelievable. And right. then we got a lot more competitive. Right. And it was, oh, yeah. That, that was, it's kind of funny. I, I thought that was about 10 years ago. Uh, very life changing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, I still kind of enjoy that. I love to shoot the 308 to kind of, I don't know. I think to nostalgia. me, you're nostalgic. Little nostalgia, yeah. <laughs> but I, I do believe there is some value in shooting that round to long range. And then when you transition over to your your six fives, your sixes, the more flatter, mm-hmm. fun rounds. Yeah, you understand that concept. There. I mean, again, I'm never gonna fucking recommend a three. Well, <laughs> we're we're also dealing with the people who are still trapped in this like mindset of like my energy and you know yeah. from a, from a specific hunting standpoint, yeah. which the like, energy transfer on target, and so it's like a special kind of like. And I, don't I, wanna, s- I can't say the word. Um, I really don't want to say this on uh, live. I really don't hate the 308 as much as I put off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we make ammo for it. No. <laughs> I just really like shitting on it. <laughs> yeah. Especially them really lightweight yeah. bullets. Exactly. <laughs> no, if, uh, I, if I was like, if I was going out and buying my first long range rifle right now, it would not be 308. Right. Yeah. Uh, it sucks as a lot of that cheap ammo is drying up these days. What would yeah. Yeah, if you were going out right now? You're like, wow, you sold me. I'm going to get in long range shooting. What caliber would you choose? I get what this, rifle? I get this question all the time. My answer is 100 percent a six five Creedmoor Ruger Precision rifle. Yeah, I can get behind that. Uh, we have a couple Ruger Precisions, and they are fantastic shooting rifles. Yep, right. Right. optic. Optic. Ooh. Um, that's a good question. I. That's a good question. So uh, if you're getting into long range shooting, I would say don't go out and blow your budget out of the water, but you definitely want to invest in a nice optic. So I would say, let me think about this. Um, I'm also a fan of buying used. So I I buy used online all the time. Just be careful with the deal that you're doing. Yes. Um, Man, so this is pretty wild. Arkin actually sent me a scope on EP5. I can't quote price because I'm not 100%, but I want to say it's about a five to $600 optic for a five to 25. For To me, that is a very impressive piece of glass for the money and would make you, you will make hits at distance. I've showed it in many of my videos. Right. I believe that's a very nice entry-level optic. Uh, there's other ones that I don't really have personal experience with. I know Vortex has some great budget-friendly optics. Right. I've also worked, I've used the higher-end ride-ons that are uh, like a seven Conquer series I want to say they're mid-1,000 range. I believe Mm. that's a a very nice scope for the money if you've got the money to spend. And then, um, you know, certainly the higher-end stuff would be better, but probably likely not where you'd be starting out. So Right. Yeah, what what, what, uh, optical range are you looking at? You're out to 1,000. For uh, for like a new shooter? Yeah, for like a new shooter. I I, I would say you can be very, you can get a nice piece of glass for 1,000 bucks. Yeah. 1,000 to 1,200. It's 3 to 18. 525, 210, like where you landed down on mm, power, I would say zoom d- ratio. It d- depends on the kind of shooting you're doing. Myself, I like a 3 to 18, 4,000 yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're if you're into maybe the small game thing, you might want a little bit more. But for the, the shooting I do, which is, again, more practical targets, today we were shooting a 10-inch plate at 1,000 yards. 18 power was fine for that. So I, I would say 3 to 18 is very... I typically... Is for long range shit. I typically I push everybody towards three to eighteen. Yep. Now, an argument could be had that a, like a five to twenty. What the, the, typically what you end up getting is once you brush off into five to twenty five territory, you're talking about a overly much larger optic. Yep, which, very big. That of which <clears throat> I'm gonna just see more mirage. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I was about to say. Like, <laughs> there is an argument. There are, there are times <sighs> to where like we're gonna keep our gear. Lightweight as possible. If somebody has a five to twenty-five, typically I wouldn't even carry a goddamn spotting scope. Yep. Now, 
whether depending on the time of day whether you're actually going to get to use that 25x if you actually need a little bit more magnification but typically speaking due to mirage uh 3d18 is gonna in my opinion it's gonna yeah. take the cake uh i like it there's i mean there's a few scopes out there 2 to 15 range i really like that range a mm-hmm. 2 to 15 uh 2 to 10s I always fucking shoot them out long range all day long, but like if a practical hunting scenario, like two to ten, I want to stay within like six hundred in something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I got, I have a couple of five to twenty fives. They're very nice scopes, mm-hmm. but for most of the shooting I do, typically I'm in the fifteen to maybe twenty power if I'm pushing yeah. out pretty far. Yeah. But the only time I really use max magnification is like hundred yard groups. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's why I, I use. Yeah, hundred percent. When I'm shooting, I'm trying to shoot tiny groups. I'll I'll yep. grab the highest magnification shit I got. Yep. But as far as long range, I no. like the field of view. You know, you think about. Oh, he said field of view, John. Yeah, you th- <laughs> I don't know if that's a. It's a, a point, cute. It's a point of contention with me and LPBO, oh. so I'll just. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> joke. No, so I like to I like to be able to see more of the target area. Right. When I'm shooting. Right. It helps For, with spotting misses. Yes. Uh. What is your what is your favorite, current favorite, uh, long range optic? Uh, my favorite would be my Night Force seven to thirty five. But with the trimmer radical, trimmer three. Yep, <laughs> love it. John, what did you expect? He's a three hundred eight shooter. Love it. Yeah, don't you don't find the trimmer to be just a bit busy? I did initially, yeah, and it Maybe. took me years to try one. So, you actually do enjoy like. All the shit going on. Oh yeah, when, yeah. Once you spend some time behind it, and you kind of get a feel for what's going on. Wait, is the U.S. SOCOM chosen reticle? I'm a fan. So the, the cool thing. I just, so I, uh, you think about the reason I went to the Trimmer Three actually is when I got my clip on night vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time I went out and shot night vision, I realized I couldn't see my turrets. Right. And so I had to like get a light. I'm like, well, that's kind of a pain. So why don't I just learn to hold over my reticle? I. Googled around, found this, said, oh, it's got some cool features in it, found one used and bought it. And uh, the more I used it... So many things happened there. The more I... So really the only things I'm using... <laughs> so I love the like two-tenths hash marks. Yes. Love the two-tenths. And then I love the center dot, so for shooting my groups. Mm-hmm. And then I also use the wind dots. Right. I think the wind dots are cool. The rest of the stuff, like I don't pay attention you to it. You can do without. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't even... Like the... I think it's ranging deals that are there above the reticle, the kind of like... Right, the stadia. It's no, no, the, to the left and right. So those, yes. I actually don't know what those do. So like, see how there's like the little yeah. kind of triangle. I'm pretty sure... Here. No one knows what it does. It's just provocative. Yeah. I did. So like when I learned to shoot the trimmer, I made some mistakes. So on the... I can't see it on your screen there, but there are mile an hour markers for like a moving target and mm-hmm. they're labeled like two, four, six. For some reason, I thought that was like mil count. <laughs> versus that was not my actual you the, the top so, right here top uh, yes one, yeah. yeah so I you know I was looking at that and I'm getting zero to a hundred I'm like oh two mils spin right. it over and that was not the right call right so after I put some time on the reticle yeah I'm a fan and now I, I prefer that style reticle interesting yep now are you like a super optics nerd do you try all kinds of shit or you just kind of I got these mm-hmm. things I kind of like them like I would say scopes, how far have you went down this road? Scopes are my favorite thing to buy and sell and trade. I love trying scopes. What are your thoughts on Mark? V? Have you tried many Mark Fives? Do you like Mark Fives? Never owned a Mark Five, but I've shot the three to eighteen. Mm-hmm. I've never shot the like five to twenty-five. So they in my currently my current favorite reticle out there is the PR two mil from Leo. Oh, okay, I haven't shot if, that. If you can, it's to me. And there, I mean, there obviously could be some reticles out there that I'm missing out on. Actually, I have a uh, a uh, not a well recognized brand optic. They basically took a meal reticle and kind of combined it for a hunting style reticle. Okay, it doesn't have enough holdovers for like more target shooting. Yeah, so that's uh, actually quite similar. Yes, it's just less. It takes out a lot of shit that I probably would never use. That's very similar though to like the Arkin reticle as well yes. as the Right On. Oh man, shooting. a lot of them nowadays are kind of falling into like. I tell you what, though. A groove. Like, I mean. So now that I've shot the Trimmer 3 for a couple of years, I I use the wind dots. Mm-hmm. So it's easier for me. You know, the wind dots, they're roughly four mile an hour dots. I know you can calibrate them, but they're close enough to four. So in my mind, I think about like, oh, that's about an eight mile an hour wind. Let me try that dot. 
and see what right. happens. Right. So when I shoot a reticle like that that doesn't have the wind dots, then I'm like, eh. Right. Does not compute. Yeah. And then, you know, that's so as it pertains to long range shooting and everything else, uh, you, you catch that. Like, uh, I've I've sit and watched a couple matches here and there because I there for a while I was like I'm gonna get into this but I realized that my OCD time and everything else there's no fucking way that I could do that unless that's all I was gonna do not in a match no uh, as as far as like I'm just saying like oh to go in pure shooting like because I would I would want to practice what I felt would it be an gotcha. adequate amount and everything else like there's just no way I could do that but. It, as far as like sitting in and listening to matches, uh, there's two different uh, mindsets that I uh, witnessed in a couple matches I've been to. Some people speak in miles per hour. Some people speak in mils or MOA, which I don't know who, what weirdo out there speaking of MOA, but whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> there, yeah. Okay. So from a hunting standpoint, and uh, there is a great argument for the simplicity of running an MOA type scope for um judging animals on the hoof as, as far as antlers and everything else yep. because of MOA like we this is the system we were raised on like American uh like I can take an MOA scope say I'm at uh 800 yards I know uh, MOA 800 yards eight inches yep. I can quickly do very easily quickly sounds do, like the kind of thinking that would put a man on the moon <laughs> which happened after <laughs> 308 was developed by the way <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. uh, I can quickly <laughs> do that math much quicker than I can, like any kind of conversions from meal and all yep. that kind of bullshit from a hunting standpoint. Now, 100%, I'm, I'm grabbing meal like every day of the week. Just begin because of simplicity of reticles and also remembering things, such as like if yes. if my whatever, something goes down, I don't have my, my data. If I have a range, uh, I'm going to, with most modern cartridges, I'm going to go with the minus two thing. I mean, yep. 300 yards, minus two is one meal. Yep. Fucking send. Like, yep. You'll be in know, the ballpark. Simplicity. I like the simplicity of the numbers. That's People ask me, like, what makes you choose meal over your way? It's like, it's a smaller number. Yes. 100%. <laughs> when yep. I write it down on a, a cheat sheet, yep. it's a smaller number. A hundred percent. There's no... Like I'm not going to get into like uh, this is actually a little bit more uh, precise of a measurement in a way. Uh, actually, I don't care. Yep. No, I, I'm the exact same way. I would I'd rather remember you know 10 mils versus what is that 36, 32, whatever. Like, <laughs> are we shooting a 308? It's a 47. <laughs> you know the other thing about mils. This is a concept that I kind of learned fairly recently. Is like the whole speed drop thing, mm -hmm. where. You know, you range, you get your speed up number and you range the target at 500 yards, you hold five mils. Mm -hmm. That's a mil thing. That's not an MOA thing. So I, right. that's another reason that I prefer mils now. Right. So, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it, I it just, I really like simplistic scopes. Mm -hmm. I love Christmas tree style reticles, but simplistic ones. Because again, I'm, I'm also coming at it from a much different position than you. Like, I look at things from, Obviously, I'm going to train with this a lot, but this is really for hunting. So having a cleaner reticle is really where I like to live. But also, I like holdovers because, again, hunting situation. If it's within sub like 600 yards, I'm not going to fucking dial. If I have the correct Christmas tree style reticle, I know that's like the easiest term to call it. I'm just going to hold. And yeah. having an adequate amount of information within that reticle is going to allow me to do, make those quick shots when I need to. Especially from coyote hunting perspective because that happens much faster usually, but... I don't know. I, I we live say, in a great time for equipment. Oh, man. These reticles have come so far. Yeah. You know, in just a few years. I will say, in one of my recent videos, I shot my Night Force with a Tremor 3 beside the Arkin with their style Christmas tree reticle. Mm -hmm. While I prefer shooting with the Tremor 3, the Arkin was easier to spot my impacts because it was a much Mine's cleaner clean. mm -hmm. reticle. So from an impact spotting perspective, yeah, the cleaner reticle had value. See, I, I want to I wanna mill... Reticle, Christmas tree, obviously. I want I want my big hashes obviously on one one yep. mil or dots, whatever you know, I'm not I like my little center aiming to be a very, very yes. fine, minute dot for when I want to really test my groups and everything else. I want my wind holds on the the main steady, I guess is what you'd call it. Steady would be the correct phrase. Why is it why is it called a Christmas tree? Why like <laughs> why specifically Christmas? Why can't it be a tree? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, An evergreen style <laughs> reticle. <laughs> uh, but I want a reticle. To me, there's no reason that, especially like a, for PRS shooters, they're not very precise shooters. Uh, there's no reason to have anything more than 0.5 mil hashes. Agre- agree. Just bracket the fucking win on the fucking target. Like I agree with that. Keep it clean. That way you can spot misses. Because like it, this is a game where it's usually timed. I don't actually. I don't. I don't know of any that aren't timed. Mm-hmm. It's timed. You're not always going to make the best decision on win calls. You're shooting primarily calibers that are going to defeat the win rather well. Point five is fine. Bracket the fucking win. Send it and be able to see have more area to see your impact because yes. they the, you know just fucking send it and miss and just put it on target i ran i shot a, a local precision rifle match a couple of weekends ago and i was shooting a scope that had point two it wasn't a tremor three but it had point two um mm-hmm. wind hash marks and i was holding i want to say point six mils of windage and i actually found myself more confused at that point by the point twos yes than in my normal like target shooting i will say the vortex's ebr 7c mil reticle it is in two tenths, but they highlight the point f- the yes. point fives, and basically, I've I've gotten yes. so used to running that reticle that I've kind of like you with the trimmer and all the busy other bullshit going on. I've learned to just basically, unless like if I'm trying to shoot my tiny target to six hundred beyond, I'll start paying attention to two tenths. But in a hunting scenario or faster scenarios, I just focus on the point fives, yep. and I bracket the fucking wind like. Favor left edge with the point yep. five and fucking send it. If it's a, if it's actually point six, I'm still gonna land on target. Yep. And, you know, like I said, like one of my favorite current reticles. It doesn't have, in my opinion, it doesn't have enough of a uh, holdovers. It only goes because it's a, it's like a milling hunting style reticle. So it has uh, down to three or four mils in your Christmas tree. So it's not overly busy, mm-hmm. and it has a very simplistic reticle. And I actually really enjoy that. And I think. It might be in 0.25 mil graduations or 0.5. I don't remember which one it is. It's it's less busy essentially. Like I remember, uh, you t- <laughs> fucking Bushnell kind of tried to reinvent themselves on their lower end budget scopes, and they came out with the Engage lines. Yes, it was Engage. Uh, it's, it, you know, some of their scopes were really good. From a hunting standpoint, uh, there was a three to twelve, and it was MOA, but it was also, uh, it was so fucking busy with lines, <laughs> <laughs> like you could barely, like it was worse than the trimmer. <laughs> so you know, I don't know. What percentage of shooters, if you went to a range, and you asked them to explain their reticle, do you think it accurately mm. take like fifty percent of it? That's a good question. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm looking at all these charts, and I'm just like. Not very. You, know, you got all this shit going on. Like I'm just not very many. Most people probably, I'm guessing, know like maybe like right here, and then like some of the lines on the, the windage. Uh, I'm gonna go with not very many. Well, I, you know, I think about some of the comments I've received on my videos and through my Instagram. Not even the con- that question's not even just around the reticle, but around using their long range scope. You know, I've I've received. I can think of a couple comments now where folks are um, they would comment in and say, "Hey, I'm shooting at." 300 yards i dialed to the three on my scope and i'm Nailed not even it. close to the target Nailed Hell it. yeah you but know it, and but isn't it crazy though think about this in 15 years from now the way you're thinking about it's going to be completely inversed because it is going to be right i i, I dialed to I three guarantee on my scope you 15 years from now yeah. that'll be standard i guarantee you we're going to go again as as uh technology evolves into the optics it's going to turn into this bdc it's mm-hmm. i feel like it's going to turn into all bdc system like as you, it's probably going to be pretty similar. We're probably going to see a point where it's pretty similar to the. Have you looked at any of the uh, early Revic scopes that uh, Ballistics program is within the turrets? No way. So you range and you start dialing, and that's when it starts doing the math. No way. And inside the optic, I'll show you one. I got a couple of them. Wow. Inside the optic, there's a HUD in the inside the reticle, and you're just as you're dialing, you're watching the numbers, and basically it's a BDC system. Wow. So it's really cool, but it's also not like. The early versions weren't that great. I'm sure there's probably like five million updates for it, and I haven't turned on. Years, <laughs> right. but, uh, I guarantee you, at some point, we're, we're gonna we're gonna move more the BDC direction as far as turrets go and everything. Because like ballistic solvers are gonna get smaller, like the technology is gonna get smaller and smaller, and we're, we're gonna see it transfer into the 
the unit itself and like at some point like probably nobody's gonna know like yeah, i'm on board with it's it. probably not gonna be any moa or mill it's gonna be a like a bdc uh optical zoom ratio like what does I'm, sig call their i'm down with it, it even though sig easy six and like the bdx system scopes they're they're second focal plane but because they have the technology and they call it like a, it's like a hybrid uh uh, something they call it an electronic focal plane or something. Like infinite, yeah. let's like, let's put infinite focal plane or something. <laughs> wow, it, it really from a hunting standpoint, like that's that's probably what you're going to go to is like, a, uh, it's again, it's it's all BDC driven and like basically as you zoom it, it's a second focal plane. The reticle doesn't move. It just compensates for whatever. But the dots, your holdover yeah. dots, will travel with it. So they call it like a electric. Optical zoom instead of a, it's not they they said it's not a first focal plane or second focal plane it's, it's electronic focal plane or some shit like that I don't remember but I guarantee you like I, I'm down with it with with a digital focal plane that's what it is with the way technology is heading is like we're we're probably heading towards straight up range finders on board the optic and you don't have to know shit it just like gives you hold over yep. <laughs> it's like more BDC style way and the funniest part okay. So thinking back to uh, my don't time. take the soul out of it. <laughs> thinking back to my time, I don't know. I'm about it. Like I'm all about new technology. Like, yeah, but funny. at what point? Like it, it's cool now because it's finicky, right? You're like, oh, like when this works, this is awesome. But like one day when it's just gonna work perfectly every time, so we'll, you're we'll like, just slowly, clearly we'll just slowly start grow to resent it way further. Like, yeah, that's exactly. Just what happens. Uh, we're just we're gonna push the fucking limits. We're gonna be. Did you hear about so and so? He shot eight thousand yards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back when the funniest part about all this shit is, back when I first started getting, I'm going to say heavy into long range shooting, really exploring the topic, trying to learn stuff about it, is fucking people just shit all over in BDC fucking anything. <laughs> if you had a BDC radical, you're trash. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. If you had if you had a looks like the loophole M three turret. Yes. If you had if you had a uh if you had a gun works you weren't a real long range shooter because it's BDC. <laughs> it's yeah like, no. uh those BDC radicals ain't worth the shit. They're not well I mean isn't all. I mean technically isn't everything BDC with extra steps? <laughs> like you're just adding a, another step into it. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. We did compensate for the bullet drop, <laughs> <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> it's like, sorry, this one's just a better version of that, you know. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Valid point. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, like I remember my first long range scope was a loophole Mark, what was it, Mark 4, 3.5 to 10. That's Mark 4, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I tried to buy some of those on that. That was like Which old one? school. Mark 4, three and a, it's 3.5 to 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had the illumination yes. up on the. Yeah. The, yes. That was like my first long range scope. And I remember back then, you know, it was like M1 turrets were quarter minutes, M2 was half, and M3 mm-hmm. was one with a BDC style. Yeah. That was that was a big debate. What back then. was your. F- we, might, we might already ask this. We've talked about so much shit now. I can't remember. LMTMWS. Huh? LMTMWS. Oh, your first long range rifle? Yeah. But the first first was in uh, Springfield M1A, Iron Sights. Oh, oh, this guy. Of course. That was of my course. first first. With what stock on it? Uh, wood. Yeah. So it, I bought it with wood and then... Uh, <laughs> of course he loves 308. Dude, yeah. Dude, you're like, you are 308. Like, <laughs> yes. you're the personification of 308. I love it, man. Like, I, I probably still have more hits with 308 than any other caliber at distance. So it's, does America and mo- all the fucking wars. So dude, I, 308 oh, yeah. I like yeah. What's up? <laughs> Two world wars. Well, 308 right there. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was... Uh, ask, ask, ask them uh, people in Gaza Strip how they feel about 308. I bet they don't like it too much, do they? <laughs> yeah. No, you're talking oh, about rifles that, that you sold. I sold that rifle years ago. I wish I still had it. I know. I, I keep, There's a couple of rifles. Well, a couple of them got stolen. Uh, but there's a couple like I sold off. Because at the time, you're just like, I want to upgrade it. Yeah. Fuck this piece of shit. That and was me too. Thinking back on it, I'm like, I wish I fucking kept this thing. The first thing I cut my teeth on when I would call long range shooting like with intent on like uh, trying to learn things was a fucking single shot 223 that would wow. shoot that would shoot a 75 grain hornet eats i didn't remember it might have been tap fucking amazingly Fuck yeah. <laughs> amazingly i don't even remember where i got the tap from single it wasn't available shot. it wasn't available uh in stores i think i had a call buddy or somebody i was buying it from that was back when you <laughs> couldn't get tap in stores uh Single shot at 400 yards. This is like my first, like, 
major accomplishment for myself was I took this thing and I shot a uh, like a silver dollar size group at a 400 yard. Nice. I'm just like, I'm a fucking sniper. <laughs> that is awesome. And then I started, is this before or after the Chris Kyle movie came out? This is way before. Oh, yeah. God, I'm kind of old. Uh, uh, the Mill Dot, I don't even remember what scope it was, some cheap piece of shit, but it had a Mill Dot reticle. And I knew enough back then to know it was second focal plane scale. I knew I had to be on max magnification in order to use the Mill Dot. And I had to be a, a Mill Dot cheat sheet. And that's nice. How, like, I remember going to my dad's. I was like, I'm going to shoot long range. I'm going to shoot over there to that hill. And it's like 450 yards. He's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hang on. So I'm fucking look at my scope, getting it real steady and everything that's else. Awesome. And I'm looking at my chart. And it's like, that's about so and so yards and third shot I, I zinged her in there and I'm like I am a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. It reminds me of all the movies just where it's like, oh, he's shooting a mile away and like, yes. it's like, oh, this is like this right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Mark Wahlberg on a can of stew. <laughs> <laughs> First shot, in fact, yes. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I mean that's basically who I thought I was back then. Though. Yeah, but, the movie know. was fucking sick. That was for the time. See, you know, like, grow up wanting to be Mark yeah. Wahlberg, but now that I'm older, I want to be the old man with the shovels. Like, <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, no. The, yeah, I guess you're right. When you paint the picture, yeah, I'm a 308. I mean, it really seems like From it. way back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, way back. So, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, this. Be, I'm curious now is like what... Grail rifles, like what would be your holy grail rifle? Something like mm. the one gun, if you could own it, no matter the cost. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, really, Barrett just released that new uh, ELR MRAD. That's your, that would be your top? Yeah, right now that's probably, yeah. I, like I, I've been around the machine guns. Like, Is that the one we have? No, we just have the Mark 22. Oh. Yeah, no, this, is, this is the new like 416 Barrett. Ah. Uh. So that that one's got my attention, right? Um, the Tano dies Leopold. I just want the goddamn scope. Yeah, gun. same oh, here. Fuck the gun. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know. That's what's coming to mind. There, yeah. So you're not you you don't you're not big into like collectible or you know things like that. You just want a little bit with the knight stuff. I get into knights armament. Oh, okay, yeah. like I'm into that. Um, How many knights do you have? Mm, several. I don't know. Okay, I know the six five and then the yeah. I probably got. Maybe six. Okay. And then I got some suppressors and stuff. So, like, I get into the Knights Armament stuff. There's some... A, a Mark 11 Mod Zero, actually, now that I think about it. I'd put that with a can. That would be... Yeah. That's that's a Grail rifle. You're talking outside That's the, the, the one we have at the shop. What's that? Knights Armament, the long suppressor 308. Oh, you have one? Uh, our boss man does, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Combat, combat deployed. Okay, see, now you're speaking my language. Okay, we have some yeah. things to show you. So that, that, that probably be... Yeah, those are cool. I get into that kind of stuff. Is the one in the case or no? No, no, no. it's the one that's uh, it's the black guy, old Vero Beach. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's the one. The one. I, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Mark 13 would be on the to do list nice. one day. Like mod five, mod like which which configuration? I like mod. I really like the mod seven actually yeah. in the AI um, like pistol grip. Yeah, yeah. Deal. Uh, but definitely the old school. What is it? Mod zero maybe? Kind of oh, the yeah. like old school. Get into that. Yeah, those those are the ones that are coming to mind. But yeah, that oh, yeah. that ELR right there that they just uh, released or whatever in four sixteen Barrett, that one I think that'd be fun. Thirty six inch counters. barrel. I just, Holy I'm, I'm fuck! Not. Yeah, that rig it's a is no fucking joke. battle tank. Like it, that's literally they just pulled the cannon out of the turret, like out of the out of the battle, <laughs> battle tank. Like, I know you three sixteen O scope people with that right. It's... I just don't. You know, I think back on my goal of shooting a mile. All right, cool, we did that, but now we could go two. So what, what is the furthest you've shot, actually? 300 PRC. Um, the furthest I have hit is right at 2,600. But I, I was like probably one for 20 with my 300 PRC. The furthest on oh, my 30-inch circle, the furthest I've had consistent hits would be right at 2,200, which is about mm -hmm. a mile and a quarter. Yeah. That one, I was pretty pumped that day. Yeah. In, in your mind, do you have an opinion on the maximum allowable target size? For ELR? Yeah, I do. I definitely okay. do. What, is it 30 inch circle? Is that it? So I like to shoot practical targets. Is not it, not you, four by eight consider? sheets of no, metal? No. I mean, what's practical one of away? No. You know, you know, so a 30 inch circle at 2200 is about a one and a half. Right. But uh, 
To me, that's probably in the ballpark. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you're kind of asking maybe two different things here. So the the four the four by eight sheet, I don't get into that. That's not the kind of shooting that I like. Yeah, and, right. And then what is practical? We make, we make fun of that here. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure what you're setting me up on. <laughs> oh no, we definitely talk a lot of shit about here on our shooters. Well, the, when you get into the point where it's literally just a probability game, well, no, yeah, so like far. try. We finally right hit this four by eight sheet at fourteen thousand yards, uh, and it was literally like, yeah, it's literally. You're not. You're no longer. You're not. You're not long range shooting. You're literally calling in ordnance, and you're just hoping that that particular one is hitting the right velocity. You know, to end end up right here, and you're yeah. just hoping that like this. There's no fucking possible way you could ever know what kind of wind to hold for. You're just kind of guessing wildly, yeah. and then hoping that within this, uh, your SD of one is still like a hundred fucking yards at this range we're trying to shoot at. <laughs> it's like. That- at some point, it's just like it becomes uninteresting to me, and that that like we're kind of nearing those points because it's no longer about the skill of the shooter, yes. or the the quality of the ammo. I, even though like I have no doubt the skill of the shooter is very high, the quality of the ammo is very high, the fucking cartridge is very high, but they're they're pushing them out to such ranges where it doesn't matter how fucking good it is. It's literally just a uh, numbers game yep. whether or not we land on this fucking target at such ranges well the scientific thing is science science always has to be repeatable yes and so well, again when you're just literally playing in like this probability game of if i launch 100 of these and hopefully it lands it's like if you play that out eventually one person's gonna do it and they're the king of it like what like, <laughs> well, that's like king of 4.9 miles what are we up to now oh, it's, know. it's far i know it's over it's gonna be four and a half five miles at this point isn't it <clears throat> i want to say it's probably in the ballpark of three but you know, I think no, about, we beat four miles a long time ago, didn't they? Really? Yeah. Am I just imagining this shit? Why well, don't I mean? I mean, who? Except, right. Like, like there's like, no. I mean, what body. rounds are we saying we defeated? This? Last year was four point four. Wow. Okay. That's one of those that. things. That, like we we usually read these and make fun of these people because uh, there's no telling how much time and money. It's like, I mean, this it, shit, and it's like on the eighty seventh try, we finally landed in this uh, massive target because. Technically speaking, it's there's not always a, a drone shot that's way too long. So that everyone's <laughs> that's like, this I mean, is how far away it is. It's a cool accomplishment, definitely. You know, I would love to do that, but I think about myself. Like, I I want to be repeatable. Yes, I want to have a yes. hit hit percentage greater than one out of a hundred. Right. Yeah. So, and I mean, just think about how much that shit costs on some mm-hmm. of those cartridges that are running, and fuck that shit. <laughs> I just I don't. You know, if it, just like you said, if it's not repeatable. Uh, I, I can't repeat it any whatsoever mm. other than like one out of every hundred tries. And it's still kind of a fucking shit show if I hit the target even still then. <laughs> That's just not. Yeah. It doesn't tickle my fancy whatsoever. Like, like If just, I go out and shoot with my buddies, can I do this? Yes. Or are they just going to laugh? Right. <laughs> You know, that's, I don't know. You ask about target size. I guess I never thought about that one. I like shooting that 30 inch circle because it's challenging but hittable. Right. At the yes. distances I shoot. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the, the minute. As it pertains to long, uh, extended long range shootings, the minute your target, <clears throat> really, this can be said about any range if you really want to look deep into it. Mm-hmm. The minute your target is statistically smaller than the capability of your ammo, yes, even, uh, uh, even uh, we're trying to say performing within like that velocity yep. range. It's it's kind of stupid, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, if, I mean, I, it's good that certain people have like they caught that autism to chase that down because it's like, in a sense, right? It does tread ground. Yes, it probably does for, for, for everybody else down oh, the road. For sure. It probably does push us into different realms of uh, exploration and equipment. Thus, probably propels some new equipment on our side. Yep. And I'm sure. I'm sure. I would hope that somebody is recording this shit extensively. Uh, programming and into uh, how they develop ballistics programs and everything else. Like I would, I would, I would hope some. That's what's crazy. That I'm reading here I on this something cool's coming. On this out. one shot, uh, four point four miles. You know, the bullet left the rifle at thirty three hundred, and it's six hundred eighty nine feet per second wow. when it hit the target. Wow. Yeah. So it's hitting the target at the same velocity a three weight comes out of a barrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ru- r- roughly. Oh man, tough crowd. <laughs> Dang. We. 
it's not again it's not so much that i i just i'm really indifferent about three i just love shitting on it because i know it upsets it also, so many people it also is that, literally is, a that is very fair they get so mad about it i'm just like that is fair do you see me what's laughing? funny is you probably own more 308s than anybody potentially else. yeah <laughs> <laughs> cannot confirm or deny uh yeah no like i mean that's definitely a cool accomplishment just not my cup of tea i yeah, want to be yeah. repeatable yeah Hundred percent. Did it say how many shots it took? Is this the one we were talking about last, where it's like eighty-seven shots or some ridiculous shit like that? Does it talk about trajectory, like how far up it goes and all this shit? Like you're, you're four point whatever miles, and you know apparently they're shooting a fucking amazing cartridge. You said forty-three hundred feet per second. It was, a, it was like a custom four sixteen barrel. Yeah, I'm sure it's like something like that. So even like even I'm sure the BC of that projectile is just unfathomable, huge, yeah. Uh, and going at that velocity and everything else, I'm sure it's like technically speaking, that is a really flat shooting cartridge. But you have to think about to take a shot at four four point three four point four miles four point four miles the amount of fucking drop that's in that. <laughs> okay, well, it, it, hit the, the, it hit on the sixty ninth shot. Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah. Scroll back up to the that rifle. Seems, that seems fixed. <laughs> Sixty nine, oh, right. really? Yeah. So you can you can look at the scope. You the know, t- oh, yeah. canted on the rifle. Plus they've got and one of the they prism got the deals. Tacom, Charlie Tacom. Isn't it? Is what, that, is, is that not two? Yeah, that is. Is it not two prism? It kind of looks like it. That is ridiculous. That's wild. That is fucking ridiculous. So and they said it required a team. So oh, they had yes. the shooters off the side, and then they had other people like adjusting the rifle. Yes. It's fucking ridiculous, wow. like the what it takes to do something like that. But you think about it, like even even at that velocity, the I'm no doubt that bullet's fucking crazy and everything else. Like the amount of wind gradients you have to shoot through. Oh, brother! Like how the fuck do you even? Plus, like, what did you put your Kestrel on like a fucking hundred foot pole and just reach it up, like put it up there and like? Do you even measure? try at that point? Or are you just sending it and then just? Well, you just what I would do. Okay, if I'm doing this tomorrow. Which is definitely going to result me we're not in doing this tomorrow. 187 <laughs> misses. No, definitely not. But I would like take your wind rating on the ground, and I would wait for the day where I know for a fact the wind's going to be blowing one solid direction. I'd want to do it in the exact perfect location yep. where I'm not going to get a bunch of crazy winds. And I would literally just okay, so uh, let's let's uh, let's call up our friend who's a pilot and let's ask him some questions about wind gradients because basically. Whatever you're reading What's on the, the ground, jet stream doing today? By, yeah, exactly. By the time it goes through all that, it's probably you're probably going to take your like w- ground wind reading and times it by like fifty, yep. <laughs> you know, or something crazy. Yep. Like I don't even know how. I don't even know how. Like I don't even know how the fuck you even get enough. If it is a crate, like say it's a ten mile an hour wind on the ground, and you're shooting that far, I don't know what the fuck. Like off the top of my head, I can't do that kind of math, but it has to be something. Quite ridiculous. It translates to start soaring through those kind of wind grades. Isn't it? Off the top of my head again, what is it like? A uh, every so many feet, you go up a certain amount of percentage, like fifteen, thirty, and all wow. this other bullshit. It's something crazy. Wow. The higher you go up, the more it amplifies. If you will, we need Sean here. We need we need Sean in here to tell us wow. about the wind gradients. But like, how do you even fucking have enough? Uh, Okay, so here, here shit your scope to even dial for any kind of crazy wind. Right. Or you just have to wait for no fucking wind on the ground, knowing that you're gonna be shooting through so many wind gradients. For every <laughs> mile per hour of wind they had to aim twenty six twenty six feet further to the left of the target. Wow. Jesus. So like, they're not even aiming at the target, they're just no. aiming at reference points. No, but another thing is they, they painted a circle so on it. The an eighty inch circle was drawn <laughs> to make the equivocation that if wow. they hit the target, they were a one MOA shooter. That's so stupid. Wow. That's stupid. I'm not impressed. <laughs> it's like, but like if it was set up for you, if it was like 4.5 miles, like it's ready to go, you wouldn't go hit the trigger. Oh, of like, course I would. Yeah, 100%. I'm the king, dude. Just to fucking shoot the gun. Like it's, but it, it, again, What's also it's interesting like, is they have to use thin metal to actually show the hit. Wow. Yeah. They can't even use like a. Yeah, you're fucking. It's literally like shooting a three away at a thousand yards. It's literally dropping in like that. That, that actually is very true. Well, that's what they're, what they're talking about is they have they they basically use audio spotting to like triangulate because they can't even tell where the hits are. Right. The the cool thing about that though, you think about the value. So, do I want to go shoot four miles? No, but that setup and that caliber and the scope and all the technology there will make me way more consistent at a mile and a half. Oh, yeah. Or like, two miles. You would think that if you're going to even go attempt four miles, a mile should be fucking cake Exactly. Off. Yeah, so... You would well, think. these people, this group of people, I guess their their whole shtick is they 
one of one of the groups they do boutique long range uh, shooting experiences out of uh, Jackson Hole. Oh no! So really? They take uppity white people shooting. Really? So it's like it sounds like a bunch of people who like long range who are just like fuck it, let's go do this. Wow. Right. Let's so gonna, call in ordinance. Uh, it seems slightly less serious, so I'm going to give them like three extra points. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because if, like, if you're just doing it, like fuck it, let's just do this thing. Send it. But if like you're like, oh, I'm I'm fucking I'm the god of snipers because I. <laughs> Oh, I would definitely talk lots of shit if I ever did that. <laughs> oh, you shot a mile? Yeah, I've shot four. Oh, there's a, there's an, a they even got deal. a signed affidavit of it. Oh, Jesus Christ. That is pretty cool. So, enough of this crazy talk. What is your, what are your, if you don't mind discussing, what are your hopes and plans for the future of the channel? Like, what are, are there some certain things that you haven't started exploring yet that you would like to get into? Like, are you going to change up any? Are you going to explore mm-hmm. different alternative shoot like are you gonna start shooting pistols tomorrow because if not we just probably can't be friends anymore that's a, that's a great question so i uh i'm constantly reading the comments i get a lot of messages on instagram mm-hmm. and i think i would answer the question by saying uh, i want to produce content that the people are interested in watching and i judge that based on the feedback that i'm getting yeah. So it's a very probably vague and political answer. Uh, well, I mean, it's also the truth. Yeah, in the short term, I see myself continuing with the long range game because it's successful and the channel's growing, mm-hmm. and it seems like it's getting positive feedback. Yep. Longer term, I definitely I enjoy shooting the AR, so I definitely want to keep putting out AR content, and I do see myself getting into pistols down the road. Mm-hmm. Part of the barrier there is I'm not a great pistol shooter, so I got to uh, tune myself up before it I do might... that. News flash. I'm sure you know this. Most people out there watching your videos, most people out there in the world probably aren't good pistol oh, yeah, shooters no, either. I, you're right. So, I mean, that's... That, that's it's okay. hard. So let me... Hmm, we'll have to revisit this once you kind of get more into pistol shooting because my personal opinion, you know, I've, I've gone through all these different realms of uh, shooting and everything else. As it pertains to like just sitting behind a bench and shooting tiny groups 100 yards, I feel after I explored pistol shooting and learned some things, I'm not saying I'm fucking great. I can't shoot tiny groups with a pistol, but I can't shoot them fast. Nope. I'm not saying I'm great, but I did learn like your bare essentials to yep. accurately shoot a pistol. <laughs> I learned some, some more bare essentials on running an AR-15 platform. The minute I was able to take some things that I learned from each one of them and then transfer that back into the rifle platform off of a, off of a bipod, yeah, you're better off. bag, I feel like it makes you a better shooter. Yep. That, that's just my personal opinion. Because there's a lot of things that if you're just running super heavy bolt-action rifles, I call that the cheat code. Because mm-hmm. it'll hide a bunch of imperfections. <laughs> and I think, you know. With a super light trigger. Yes. Yeah, for sure. When you actually go out and explore these different... Uh, platforms and you learn how to control that recoil and then you kind of in my opinion you kind of take all those things and put it together and apply that to your uh, shooting discipline it'll make you a better shooter uh, it'll be interesting to see yep. it'll be interesting to see your take on pistol shooting and I, my opinion you should carry us the YouTube watchers and listeners along oh, I will. with your journey exploring how to yeah, accurately, I, I mean, or whatever you end up doing with a pistol. Uh, I know. It's like, super interesting. I think one of the things that uh, folks find value in or enjoy about my channel is just I'm a regular guy. Mm-hmm. And that's what I intend to keep doing. So I, I intend to keep being a regular guy that enjoys shooting and bringing the viewer along for that experience. So that's my plan for forever of the channel. Right. Wherever I go. So say we get into pistols. Yeah. That's what I would do. Regular guy were to go learn to shoot uh, pistols. Just, you, better, you better just get ready for the hate when you get into pistols because that is a I'm fucking t- atrocious community. I'm telling you, I love the hate. It's, <laughs> it's pretty fun. You know, it's, that's your opinion, man. Cool. Sounds good. Um, you know, make a video and teach me. Right. Uh, no, you just tell them that they're epistemologically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Their foundations are just, they're not there. You know, and actually, to be fair, you know, some of the, I have, learned from the haters mm-hmm. so maybe the delivery is a little bit rough but there have been some very good comments where i'm like oh they actually do have a good point yeah i yeah. mean you if you're gonna nowadays i don't read a lot of stuff uh but i still do because again you get a lot of he gets enough hate for me yeah i mean there again <laughs> i say this all the time there's nothing you can fucking say in that comments that i haven't said to myself 12 times yeah. worse over i got i'm my own harsh critic yep 
And I think that's what makes me good at the things I am good at is because I am my own harsh yeah. critic. I'm always trying to be better. You got to be things. better. Uh, but there are certain things you can learn about them comments. Like sometimes people are spot on. Like you were fucking up or you were yeah. doing this. But I don't know if you captured this. There's another YouTuber out there that's. Uh, he tried to big doggy on one of your videos, and I found it quite hilarious. I'll have to point it out to you. I'm not going to say it in this video because he probably listens. He probably hates me. <laughs> you okay? Here's a question. He tried I have. to big doggy though. Is the it's, uh, just, just, it's jealousy? I guarantee you, okay. that's all it is. But how do you feel about those comments that are uh, like you get the criticism, but then they're actually like, really funny? Oh, I you're just like, I oh, you're just like, oh, fuck, that, that guy <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> Does he know me or something? Holy shit. Really. If that was my buddy, we'd get a good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, long term on the on the, the the channel though, do you see yourself staying more like concepts and theory yes. or more gear reviews? Like, is there one you prefer? I, or right now, I love the concepts and theories and the instructional type. Yeah, I I would like to do gear reviews down the road. I want to make sure I'm careful with how I do gear reviews that, you know, that I can be a trusted uh, place to go for the information. So that's why I've been kind of slow to get into it is I want to establish some street cred with these type of videos mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. I get into that. So if you just come out of nowhere and you're like, I'm going to review this product. Yeah. What yeah. background do you have? Yeah, a lot of people are going to be like, who the fuck are you? Right. Versus Which, if you establish this yourself. This is something we talk about a lot. Like, well, we have talked about a lot. We probably don't talk about it much anymore. Like. When you come out with certain videos talking about certain things, and like you may be local legend, like you may be known as the guy, the go to guy about all things this. But as as far as internet land, these fucking people don't no know clue. who you are. They have no clue. I think that's where where uh if you know what the fuck you're talking about, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if you've established yourself as so and so. I don't I don't I don't think you owe these fucking people anything. If you actually know what you're doing and you're able Obviously, you're really good at conveying your point. If you're able to convey your point in a, in a way that makes sense and people can digest and they actually know you know what you're talking about, yep. I think you'd be just fine. I, mean, I think you can be just fine anyways. I mean, my thoughts, that's where I'm at right now. I want to build that street cred, build the audience, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and build that trust through the concept type videos, through the comparisons before we move into a straight up gear review. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I, well, it prevents its challenges. So earlier you talked about, you know, the length of your videos and we were saying like versus other content creators. And it seems like most gun tubers have kind of gone to this place where they're like trying to be like Hollywood cinematographers. Everybody thinks they're Chris Nolan running around. And it's like, it's not about the gun. It's about like, look how cool I am shooting yeah. this gun. Yeah. And that's where I like, I don't watch a lot of, I grew up watching gun YouTube, but I don't really, there's really very few channels that I do watch because it's like, I don't want to see you, you get pretending to be that? cool. Yep. Um, and the same thing with gear reviews is it's like they're almost so formulaic at this point where it's yeah. like I'm I'm basically going to read you the spec sheet off the website while unboxing this. Yeah. And then be like, yeah, that shoot's good. Yep. Or, yeah. ooh, I just don't like this. And half the people with scope, so don't, yeah. know, don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> no, I, I would say, you know, like saw. if I'm not creating content, I'm watching content mm -hmm. in this space on YouTube. So I consume a lot of this stuff. And then my goal with my channel is to make sure I'm hitting a unique niche. And right. so far, I think we're doing that. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, you 100% are. I mean, that's, I've noticed kind of the audience that I've had people like forward me you over the last however many months. And it's like, it's kind of like the AR person who is like, you're like curious about long range. Like you're yep. hitting a very specific demographic. And it's, it's all like that same type of my friend who always send me your videos. So I always find that interesting. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's kind of. It is kind of weird comparing to most gun tube because it did is. Did you? Uh, sorry. I don't know. You're, you're fine. Did you see? And now I know we, we talked about the video, uh, the one that picked up a lot of traction. Did you see any correlation or have you actually looked at it in uh, your your semi auto content with the popularity of 6R growing? Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> not, nec not necessarily. Funny just question. Si not necessarily. Oh, like really, really deep diving into your comments and everything else. Not necessarily like six art content because we've talked about this at damn near nauseum. Like we've had great uh, success with six art content. You've seen good success with six art content. I'm just saying, like, I feel as if six art picked up where Valkyrie Valkyrie has started like starting to fire, starting to fire mm -hmm. like AR shooters who are basically been 
mag dump it into burns because it's cool. And then now they're 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 learning a few more things. They're going to expand the horizons, like getting out a little bit for the range. Where that died off because everybody, I mean, let's be honest, the fucking Valkyrie was a tragedy. Six aren't picked up, and it was relatively successful. Oh, it still is. It seems as if we're propelling, like we're getting out of mag dumping into barbs, and these guys are starting to like take their platforms a little bit further. Yep. Did you see any correlation with the success of your overall audience? Like, and did you see any noticeable difference in your? Uh, I don't know what you'd call that uh, customer base clientele. Oh, yeah. Which. For your sure, viewer base, and you know, with the popularity of Six Art Rising, like, because to me, you can a lot of the times you can read comments and you can just I can we should do this sometime, or maybe you should do this, like looking at comments, to try to guess what rifle they shoot. Because <laughs> I guarantee <laughs> you, like, I can guess who the AR. It's pretty easy most of the time to guess who the That's AR funny. shooters are, who the bow gun guys are, and like the boomers and all that kind of stuff. I'm just curious, like. How technology gets like it opens up a new realm or world to these certain people that yeah. have been doing certain things. Like the red dot shooters are now tired of shooting red dots and uh, still at twenty five yards. Now they're they're expanding their horizons and shooting long range. Uh, I can't say I've memorized the stats in all my videos, but I would say the six arc. I got into six arc because of the comments and the messages. <laughs> so prior to releasing a six arc video, I got so many. Like yeah. six arc was one of it's like six arc and seven PRC, basically the only calibers people were asking me to shoot. So a lot of demand. I Interesting. Like, oh yeah, that so many folks when I started putting out these videos were saying get a six arc, shoot a six arc, tons. So then I put out the six arc, and then on the back side of YouTube you can see all the metrics for how your video is performing, and I, comments are great and reading those are awesome. But uh, you can see how many folks have subs subscribed to your channel based on that video, and the six arcs are definitely on the top end of that again yeah, i can't quote the exact numbers right. but, but definitely versus like some of the battle zero type stuff some of the red dot type stuff that you got on the screen there the six arc stuff comes out of the gate and does very strong i think i think it's because john's people are getting more interested in long range shooting and let's I, be honest for a moment here yeah uh as it pertains to uh fighting rifle would you rather fight someone far away or up close yep I'd rather just shoot them far away. I, I I've, I've been un, been unable to explain it. I think it like the like because it, maybe it stems from the military and cool kid communities. Uh, that that definitely because the amount of people I've heard like, don't build a six arc. You don't need one because they're like oh, I just need a six arc. And you're like, what are you going to do with it? And it's like I'm going to train with it. It's like <laughs> what does that mean? Like, but have you ever shot a five five six at distance? Well, that's and that's what I ask people because they're like they're wanting to get a six arc because that's what the new thing. But it's like they're not they don't plan on shooting it past hundred yards, and it's just like no, yeah, no, you don't need dude. That. It's gonna just be a complete hit in your ass. Like don't do that. Yeah, right. But it seems like it. All I can think of is it, it, it stems from the fact that it was like oh this is a military special cool yeah, kid I'm group sure. developed around, and then you get people who are like oh I need the special cool kid military developed thing. But yeah, I, I think. Don't. But I say buy them fucking six arcs. All it's going to do is uh, promote more companies okay. making more six well, okay. arcs. Well, <laughs> okay, I say I say now yes. Yeah. This yeah, was back when we couldn't was, get ammo. Yeah, back. leave that shit alone. Exactly. <laughs> Least up for us. I remember people were like I'm just really getting the itch on building one, and I'm like, like what's your use case? It's just I don't know. Like, okay, probably no. Don't do that. Yeah, I, th I think a fair question there is you know again I'm target shooter based mm -hmm. would be. What are you doing with five five six, and where is it underperforming for you? Right. What is your favorite barrel length in five five six? Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to agree with that one. Yeah, I, I like. I like as you can see on all my videos. The shorter the barrel, the more I like it. Right. But five five six, I think fourteen and a half is very maneuverable with a suppressor on it. It's capable out to distance. I'm a fan. I I kind of think. I kind of think in a semi-auto platform, my favorite six arc is fourteen and a half. Yeah, I really, it's awesome. I really think that's my favorite. But it's also like that's my favorite gun. My my favorite semi-auto. I would never say that to my bolt gun, but my <laughs> twenty-two Creed. But uh, now fourteen and a half. It's maneuverable, suppressed, uh, but still gives you enough to get up right. to distance. I, I agree with that. I think fourteen and a half is good. It'll I, probably uh, be my favorite twenty-two arc as well. Who knows? <laughs> you think about 14 and a half, man. And earlier you made a comment around what is a DMR. And I actually have a video loosely around that concept 
556 versus 308. And a lot of comments there around 14 and a half. And that's not a DMR rifle. You can't shoot at the distance with it. We we toyed around with that once and we got some... (laughs) <laughs> very interesting people in the comments who the, were just uh, actually people. No, like, oh, like, like that was but like internet well. legends who were just like, no, the technical definition from this unit when they started with this, and then the recce <laughs> rifle, and then the, 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 the stemmed out of this DMR program. Oh, like, touche. and you're just like, you're a wealth of like, you're hilarious. Like, I love reading your comment, but holy shit, you just like spazzed out the comment, like, like wrote like paragraphs in, in a YouTube comment. Do you have any, uh, sorry to cut you off, That's right. no, you're fine. Do you have any uh, serial haters? Mm. I can't think of any serial. That just like sticks out in your mind. Like it's just always there being a fucking hater. I don't recall any serial haters. I definitely have serial supporters, which is awesome. We we have, uh, yes, we have our serial supporters. I I can't think of any. But I fucking, he's going to listen to this. I love our serial hater. You know what I'm talking about, John. He always like. He he doesn't watch every week, but he it's, it's almost like he waits, and then binges, and then binge watches, and he'll go through that. Like you'll just randomly, he'll go comment on all the fucking videos, and just all this fucking hate. I love reading it because it's fucking hilarious. You know what I'm talking about? Like we talk about him all the time, yeah, yeah. and that's probably why he does it. So I definitely I don't know that it's I don't think serial hate is the term for it, but I definitely have users that are clearly watching back to back to back. Does and just, that not trip you out? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Do you have the YouTube app like yeah. the creator app? Yeah, it's and pretty like funny. Just, I get emails, and I'm constantly in my emails for work. <laughs> yeah. And when you just, like, see, like, so-and-so reply to your video, so-and-so yes. reply to your video. And I'm a huge, like, I'm a YouTube degenerate. I'm like, always watching YouTube. Like, everything, Same all the time. Here. AirPod in the air. And you're just, like, watching this guy. You're just like, dude, like, you're on, like, a six-hour binge. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I appreciate the support. <laughs> oh, no, 100%. Sure. <laughs> but you're like, like, surely the con, like, do you don't have anything better to do? Like... <laughs> It, tri- it trips me out. It, like, I get weirded out by it. And I, I try to respond to as many as I can. And I'm like, so do I respond to all of those? Or do I just respond to one or two of them? Or You, okay, so been doing that type of shit, like responding to questions for years. Just do what you can. You're right. Yeah, that's what I try to do. That's, uh, the, but I'll tell you this right now. Uh, once you're known as the nice guy who responds and answers questions and everything else, the minute you start, Stop doing it to certain individuals like what they come to expect out of you. You're the fucking asshole. Well, I Just t- saying. That will happen. Definitely. Now that the channel is growing and I'm getting more comments it's and Instagram messages, it's hard to keep up with all of yeah, them. Yeah, people. Sure. It's, it's un- unmanageable. Like, yeah, it's, that, be, it's only going to get worse. I have a full-time job I have to yeah. balance. So it's... Barrel twist recommendations, caliber recommendations, optic recommendations are probably like the... <sighs> The most asked questions I get all the time. No, uh, for me, those are tough to answer because I haven't tried everything in the industry. So that's what I always tell people. It's like I know what I like. I've had good luck with this. <laughs> you know, I know what I've used and what I liked, but uh, there it's a fucking crazy market out there. Yep. I mean, you know, some questions are way easy to answer, and some of them are very fucking tough to answer. But typically, if you don't like it, you can sell it and buy something else. Yep, buy sell trade trade groups on Facebook on optics. Yep. Can be your friend. Yep. Also, sometimes it can be in your worst nightmare. Yeah, I got I got shafted <laughs> earlier this year. You just got to watch for that stuff. Um. Yeah. No. I w- Yeah. Definitely. There are the. I don't know. It's, you know. To your original point, serial commenters. Uh, definitely appreciate the serial supporters. I I love even it, okay. So I love the fact when people get in our comments. And they join in on the nitpicking and having fun. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love that because, like, we, you know, that's part of kind of what we do is we talk a lot of shit uh, because it's literally who we are. Like, we're mm-hmm. just trying to stay true to who we are. We talk shit and have fun. Oh, it's fun. But also, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about cool things. Well, things we think are cool. Uh, we're gonna talk shit. I love it when the people get in there. It's like if I do something, like my favorite ones are like. Uh, let's play a drinking game. Every time Wade says this, we're going to take a drink. <laughs> like They point out like my little flaws, which is fucking hilarious. I love it when they interact that way. The, yeah. the you know, the people that, uh, the, the serial haters, again, there's not many of the serial haters. There's one in particular. I fucking love it when he comments because he's quite hilarious. But he, <laughs> you can tell he does not like us whatsoever. <laughs> I just find it fucking hilarious. But, you know, 
I don't know. I just, it doesn't matter what the fuck they say. It's not. It's not gonna. I'm never gonna let it like bother me to a point. Uh, but I am gonna read them and I am gonna take like yeah. take things with you know into consideration, if you will. I pissed a bunch of people off for a while because it's going really hard on Taylor Swift stuff. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, a lot of our followers really yeah. don't care much for Taylor Swift, or they're just lying and they like Taylor Swift. So b- before That's we probably r- the case. before we wrap up, what is the official Mountains Molds America opinion on Taylor Swift? I'm a huge fan, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh I, my god! I, I didn't expect it. I'm a 1989 era right here. Hell Jesus yeah. Christ! That's what's up. She's I have a skank. A, oh god. <laughs> He has his friendship. Look at his mic. He has a little Wade Hart's T Swift friendship <laughs> bracelet. Uh, I might have just earned some haters right there, but uh, no, it's fine. I, I think it's, I was, it's one of those things. I, I kept I, like overdoing it on purpose just to piss people <laughs> off. There was one where he talked about it for like a fucking hour. Uh, I think again, it's going back to those comments where it's fun. Yeah, I think uh, nowadays it's it's every fucking week I get at least anywhere from. Could be three, it could be fifty memes about Taylor Swift, and they're always like, "Show us the Fitzy," or there's people like, "I want to see fit a picture of Fitzy." Like That's all that awesome. shit, I find hilarious. And again, it's like this little. It's mostly like this little game. Like I guarantee most of those fuckers are listening to Taylor Swift. It, which is it's really interesting, like how you. I mean, you can just build a community. Like you just like yeah. put in the work. I mean, yep. obviously you know what it's like to just get to put a lot of effort actually into doing something yep. and. Uh, and then, like, there's just people who want to talk about it and share the interest. It's kind of fascinating. Oh, we're not done yet. I have a few more questions. Uh, Jesus so, Christ. I know it's getting Christ. late, but that's that's a sign of things that people don't. I feel well. Some people might, but until they actually try to put together like content and everything else, that's a sign that goes unseen and everything else. That's why, like, even like the the douchiest you gun tuber. Who like very highly edited content and everything else? I still have some level of respect for them, even if I don't care for anything oh, yeah. they're saying, because of the drive and the hustle. I know it takes to put in like p- to produce this. So on average, let's say, well, maybe you don't have an average, but let's just say, average day, you have a concept. You have like a list of concepts. You have everything in your head. Like how do you? Yeah. My notes app in the phone. So you have a notes app. Okay, I have a concept. I want to do such and such a video. Mm-hmm. Average time frame. How long does it take you to go out in? Mm. Say everything goes smoothly. Mm. How long does it take you to go out and shoot a video? Yep. I'm sure. I'm assuming there's some sort of editing taking place. Upload and edit, and then publish. How long? How much work are we putting in? This is the this? side of it I was not prepared for. So, uh, I'm a one man show. Mm-hmm. You know, so like you watch my videos, I've got the scope camera going, I've got the downrange GoPro, I've got two iPhones going. Uh, so to film a video, so say one of these twenty to thirty minute videos, you're looking at a day, a solid mm-hmm. day, from like nine o'clock in the morning to five or six o'clock at night. That's just on. filming. Yeah, because you know every one of those scenes, I have to run down and reset the GoPro, and then come. You know, it's a thousand yards or a mile down there on my four wheeler, just by myself. Mm-hmm. Shoot it, go back down, turn it off, change the batteries out, whatever. So you're looking at a solid day of the actual shooting piece, which is the fun part. Mm-hmm. And then editing wise, I actually have a pretty good process down now. You know, you're probably looking. I'm gonna ballpark four ish hours on the editing side. And then your upload, like basically hit upload. Yeah, and then an hour of description, putting the time slots into the video and that kind of stuff. So so you're in it, you're a long-ass day of shooting uh, content and actually shooting your rifle and everything else, typically. Th- this is I'd like say, say a f- non-multi-tiered video. Like This is just a simple video. Oh, it's very simple. Full day of shooting. 15 hours, probably pretty Literal easy. shooting. Yep. Uh, then let's just say you're going to... Bu- you're probably going to burn up close to a full day of editing and posting and everything else, uh, preparing. So that's two days worth of work of your time. Uh, so I know those sweet YouTube gods are sending you tons of money. How no, much money are you making on no, this? Not much. There not, you go. Not as much as many people, um, at right. least people close to me think. Right. Folks are like, oh man, you got a YouTube channel, it's monetized, you know, you're killing it. I've had messages um, on Instagram, you know, man, like, are you full time? <laughs> you know, did you give up your full time job? And I'm like, yeah. man, I, we're not even probably breaking even. Right. So when it comes for like fuel to get to the range, a lot of the ammo I'm still, you know, I mm-hmm. have to pay for myself. The gear I'm paying for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I took a flight out to Texas. I'm going to put that like, so I'm trying to create like a legitimate maybe 
right. um, channel and everything. But no, no. Right, honestly, right it's, now it's yeah, it's a labor of love. Yeah, I'm having a blast. Now, the good, the cool thing about uh, what you're doing and everything else, you seem to really be enjoying it. I love it. Yeah. The cool thing about it is, is like you you found something you're good at instructing. Well, I call it instructing and entertainment. Yeah. Like you're really good at explaining everything that's going on. Uh, the cool thing about it is, is if you stick with it, it's eventually going to potentially turn into a career. Oh, the growth is happening. You know, yep. so I mean, super exciting. Uh, yeah, no, the growth is definitely. Ha- I will say, you know, uh, with the exception of a couple months in the summer, every month this year has been better than the last. So, you know, November views, watch hours, subscribers, the um, the money. November was the best one yet. Now, do you, when you put together an idea based off the comments, do you like, if I see X amount of comments, I'm going to go ahead and do a video on it? Or do you uh, just like, if I see, if this thing just really sticking out, people are just screwed about it, I'm going to go ahead and put together a video? Yeah. Uh, do you ever, go ahead. Do you ever worry that when you're putting together a video, now that, like, now that the, the, you know, there is some recognition and everything else. Like your, your channel's obviously growing tremendously. Do you ever worry when you're, you're hitting that, uh, upload button you're like god damn it oh for sure i hope this is good yeah for sure definitely because <laughs> like i've done a so i've been trying to create content that people are watching mm-hmm. it's a fine line between putting out more of that content and not putting out too much of the same stuff right so right yeah because it's like I, I suffer from the same thing uh thinking like well, if I was ingesting this content, mm-hmm. I would want to know every fucking. I would want to deep dive this thing. Like, I, I'm because I'm not, I'm a data person. I'm not like a. Well, uh, that one insignificant s- study shown that this works at this one particular time. That's good enough. Me, I'm just like no, I'm fucking explore all yeah. the avenues, all the different zeros, and everything else. It, you know, I don't think I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it at this. I don't think you're gonna run out of. Uh, autistic people anytime soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the internet's full of them. I don't know if you're aware of this. That's the way I am, you know, like, <laughs> you know, nowadays YouTube is a place that people go first for information. Yes, absolutely. And I definitely want to be a source of that. So I don't, you know, I, I know I know the struggles of like deciding how far to go with something is like, same thing with a podcast. Like a lot of this shit, I struggle. I have to physically make myself sit down. Like when we're doing a very information driven podcast about a particular subject. I have to make myself sit down and hit high points because if yes, I feel as if sometimes like I probably go way too deep down a rabbit hole on something, and meanwhile you have someone to comment it's like I fucking love this. Yep. It's like oh, there's other people like me out there. Yeah, and <laughs> you know with the YouTube stats, you can see the average watch time and mm-hmm. where people drop off and stuff. And yeah, the longer videos, people are watching. Them. It's same thing with like. What prepare? I feel like it's the same thing. It's what prepared podcasts into the atmosphere is that long form, uh, basically allowed people to learn so much more shit yep. through podcasts. I feel as if like we're probably, I could be totally fucking wrong here. I don't who the fuck am I? We have a fucking tiny podcast. We're, we're probably uh, leading. I feel as if we're leading into a new realm of gun tube content. Where it's probably going to follow the same, like we we've had we've had I don't know a good run of like the the tabletop review shortened highly fucking yep. you know which that shit's always going to be around but I feel like we're we're probably moving into an era of more information such as being shown by the popularity of your YouTube yep. channel which I hope so because like if it's someone willing to put into work and they're actually giving you valuable content and simplifying it in terms for other people to understand and everything else, I'm all about it. Like I'm all about that. It is, you know, again, you think about really awesome. I can't quote all the numbers, but you think about gun ownership in America and you think about the AR sales in America, you know, we're on like record highs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new people coming into this industry and uh, you know, where are you going to go to learn about your AR? YouTube. Yep. And hopefully there's instructional material there for them to, consume and, yeah and, and my the, goal is to do that and we're, you know we're again like i said we're looking at like the the berm shooters are now looking to expand their horizons into like new territory which is like a natural progression is to want to shoot further away yep. uh, just as accurately as you can close up 
So, you know, and, you know. know, the other thing I look at is you look at matches, you look at the PRS series, two gun matches, they're just busting at the seams with people that want to shoot those matches. Right. So folks are wanting to learn to use their equipment. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is instructional material. Yeah, I agree. So is that a good place for how long have we been Jesus doing this? Christ, wrap it up. <laughs> I mean, I thought I think it's only Dang. appropriate that we we have him on for a long time. Like I said, I've shared pens for like thirty minutes. You yeah. get someone in here that's like again that can nerd out and shit with me. We could we could make this a seven hour podcast. So I can talk forever <laughs> we'll about all this day shit. tomorrow. Like, exactly. Uh, <laughs> this was the short former. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This tw he said this. Is oh, we, actually, we haven't been recording. This was just like a preliminary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you said that, I'd probably stab <laughs> you in the neck with a pen. That's awesome. <laughs> well, anyways. Uh, look forward to doing more stuff with you, uh, 100%. Uh, we certainly appreciate you coming out and coming on the podcast. Hopefully, we'll get you back in here for some more content. We definitely want to record some 12 minute talks, uh, with you, like individualized questions and everything else. But yeah, sure, we certainly appreciate you making the trip. Uh, would love what you're doing on YouTube. Like I said, Mountains, Mullets, America is it America. Yeah, 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 America. <laughs> it'll it'll America. be linked in the comments. <laughs> yes, uh, you, you know, if you listen to this podcast, you've heard me talk about it. This is the man. We're here. Uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, it's been a great time, but great conversation. Even though we could, you know, we we haven't even like barely gone into the realm of like equipment and stuff, shit like that. So maybe yeah. that's what we'll get into tomorrow. No, I I appreciate the invite. I know. Kind of one of the main things that people have asked me is like, what's my background? Who am I? Mm -hmm. And um, this has been kind of a fun way to kind of air out some of that. And right. Those those that are supporting you and supporting me will get a look behind the curtain. You should have made up a story like, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> Military <laughs> career, I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah. No, not that cool. <laughs> Just a normal guy. But no, I appreciate the invite and I'm glad to be here and we'll, yeah, keep working together. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fitzy, any final closing thoughts? Nope. <laughs> I like it. Uh, well, uh, we appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you guys next time.